Hello everybody, this is Nia Feiler and I'm here with the weekly astrological message for the week between the 18th and 26th of December 2020. Wow, what a week we have ahead. First of all, we have the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn happening in the first, well actually in zero zero degrees of Aquarius and 30 minutes. If you want to see how this conjunction will affect you personally, look at the zero zero degrees of fixed signs in your charts that is Leo, Aquarius, Taurus and Scorpio we are going to talk about that we're going to talk about the solstice and we're going to talk about many other exciting transits that are happening in the sky but first I want to announce that for the last two weeks of uh, 2020 all the readings with me all private courses and all groups are at 50% off. So utilize that and book now. So, <coughs> for this week, on the 19th, which is a Saturday, we have Jupiter moving already into Aquarius, going to be joined by Saturn just a day and a half later. And Venus is trining Chiron. When Venus and Chiron are trined, this is something that we can feel a few days before and a few days after, like many of the transits that we are going to talk about over this week. It's a very full sky that we have at the moment, fast pacing sky that we have in the moment, dynamic. This is a great time, Venus Ryan Chiron, to heal, to heal our relationships, to heal how we interact with one another to heal the value that we get from our relationships. And indeed, not only the relationships that we have with others, but the relationship that we have with ourselves. To heal our own self-esteem and the relationship with our body, with our senses, with sensuality and sexuality, and indeed with money and income. This is a very tender time, but it is an amazing time to utilize for healing on all levels. Other than that, a day later, we are having Kazemi in the sky, Mercury in superior conjunction in the heart of the sun. This is like a full Mercury, a full moon. This is the height of a process. No, no better time to actually think things over and understand what needs to go on for the next month and a half, and what needs to be amended and taken out. This is a recalibration point in which we can visualize how we would like our next month and a half to look like. Monday the 21st we're having the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn and the December solstice in the sky. It's the shortest day of the year and the longest night in the northern hemisphere where traditionally there were always astronomic pagan rituals depicting the rebirth of the light. Of course these were put upon Hanukkah, the festival of lights in the Jewish tradition and the birth of Christ in the um, Christian tradition. They are older holidays, astronomical holidays, signifying the rebirth of light in the nor northern hemisphere. And indeed, this is a time to rekindle our own light. This great conjunction on a personal level could make us understand and, and reveal to us things that have previously been not fully understood and grasped. And since we now recollect these understandings we need to amend and change our ways since our consciousness has, has opened up and, sp and spread open so do our actions need to change and transmute so on a personal level we could be understanding that some of our morals some of our action in the past you know they need to change they don't stand up to the new rules to the new guidelines we want to follow in our lives but on a general public level, this has always been a time, always been a time of great geopolitical change, of a great economic change, of people hypening and, 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 and really stepping up a notch from in the relationship between the ruler and the ruled. The last time, I mean, I mean, this conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn happens every 20 years. But the last time it was this exact was 800 years ago in the 20s of the 1300s, 
right when Francis of Assisi was walking around and the Magna Carta was signed with King John in England, becoming the base of English law, the base of any human right uh, um, declaration since, including the one of the United Nations and the Constitution of the United States. Basically, declaring for the first time in history that being a subject of a ruler doesn't give that ruler the right to treat me unjustly to harm me in any way that all men are born free and must be treated with respect and justice that was the first time this was adopted and indeed 800 years later we are stepping up our request from ourselves as a society and from our um, system ruling system as a society we understand more and more because of the situation we are in and maybe we can't even go out and vote so once every few years we could sit down and murmur what a bad job our leaders and heroes are doing <laughs> no we are being pushed into our rooms computers electronics and suddenly we understand that we can make a choice with our fingerprint, you know, and, and through our phone or computer or, or laptop, you know, and just if we want to decide on something important like the allocation of funds or passing a law of environmental defense or maybe even a treaty with another country or people, we can do it from the privacy of our own home and we don't need all these offices with all these people with their Mercedeses and their flights abroad and their cocktails from our money we can keep the managerial we can keep the people actually doing the job that are not elected that are professionals and take personal responsibility and choose for our own selves and more and more people around the world are understanding that we're no longer ignorant and we cannot think of ourselves as such anymore we are the rulers, the saviors, the heroes, the leaders that we've been hoping for all our lives. Here to save us from ourselves. Isn't that funny? But it's true. And nobody else is going to save you from yourself but you. Trust me on that one. And this is something we are all understanding. And this is what this great conjunction, a lot, is about. It's an initiation to the age of Aquarius, where governance is going to be something much more abstract, technological, and uh, less centralized. Um, Mercury and the Sun move into Capricorn that same day, becoming... Um, more serious, concrete, and, consensation, and consensual is important at these times. Tuesday has a nice energy, but communications are sensitive, especially because um, the moon is squaring Mercury that day, and then a, later, a day later Mercury squares Chiron. It's a sensitive time with communications. And we need to make sure that we're not getting hurt or hurting others with our words. This is also the Wednesday is the day that Mars, the planet of male energy and vitality, squares Pluto, its higher octave, the ruler of Scorpio. This is a very dynamic, very feisty, very fiery, very angry many times. And very violent kind of... Um, aspect in the sky and it affects all of us and the less aware you are the more it can cause you to take the beast out for a walk so we could see more crimes we could see more hate crimes we could see more violence we could see more war we could see more agitation by everybody and in our personal lives if you meet some violence whether it's 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 uh, 
in rhetoric or in, in, in God forbid, uh, and more than that, be sure not to play along with it. Be sure to deflect it and move away because it is a, a time that things can escalate from one minute to the next. <coughs> Thursday has that kind of energy as well. The moon is in Taurus, which really cools it down a little bit, but it's a day with no satisfaction and a, a big warning from obsessiveness and compulsivity and taking things too far. I mean, putting the border a step before on Thursday the 24th is a good thing. On Friday the 25th, we have Mercury trining Uranus, which brings a lot of bright ideas, inventions, and forward-moving communications and just a, high, a, a heightened pace to things. And then by Saturday, we're having Sun Square Chiron. So through all these days, few days before, few days after, we are very sensitive regarding our being, regarding our ego, regarding the love and the place and the honor that we are getting on the stage of life from everybody. And we need to make sure that that hunger doesn't drive us to act in a way that could be detrimental for us or other people around. This is a great time not to heed that hunger, but actually to tend to others and heal through who you are and through your being. And that's about it. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, Happy Midwinter, and whatever you're celebrating. I want to thank you for heightening the light, and may we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.